Hi, everybody. Okay, so as I was driving to the park where I'm at right now, I was thinking about why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Um, and so here's, I, I'm going to explain. Um, so the last probably 48 hours, I have been wondering where I'm going next and what I'm doing next. And then I would get these feelings of fear, sudden feelings of fear. And like I had to do something. Like I, it was in, I had to make a move, make a decision, make, do something to make something happen. And so last night, God led me to fast. And I know I look away from the camera a lot. It's because I don't like seeing my face this close. So sometimes if I'm too focused on what's in front of me, I can't allow the flow to happen. So I end up trying, because now I'm fo I'm like, oh my God, look at that. So... I look away to distract myself and to give myself a little bit of clarity um, so that it's not me coming through, but God. And so I was thinking about all the times where things changed. And just before things changed, I always had these feelings of doubt, fear, and internally, I have to keep telling myself, I have faith, I have faith, I believe in God, I trust God, I am in alignment with God, God trusts me, he has faith in me, because, and, and it was funny, because as I, I was driving here, I was thinking about these things, and not I don't contemplate things this deeply all the time, okay? So as I was thinking it, uh, you know, going through, I saw a license plate that says we are two or, or something like that. And then I, and that thought got me thinking about Eve and well, how did, how did she feel when Lucifer was lying to her and giving her all these ideas that, and then I started to think, well, she was the first one to get lied to. She was the first one to lose trust. So, and then I started to think about how when wild animals are born, they are born with a genetic code that already has information about things that their parents have been through, their grandparents. And I thought, well, is that the same for humans? Is it the same that what we have gone through in past generations, that information gets passed down through the bloodline? And that is why sometimes we know things or when we are in a situation that we have never experienced before, but yet it seems familiar is that because it's gone, it's something that our past relatives have gone through and they have built that information into our genetic code? And then I thought, 
Well, what was it that got Eve to eat that apple? You know, we, we read the scripture and I think people take it at face value and say, oh, well, Eve sinned because she, she broke God's commandment. She broke, she didn't listen to God. Well, it goes deeper than that. If you think about it and the intricacy, the intricate, inti- intric- the detail. <laughs> yeah, that's a word I can't say. Intricity, uh, whatever. The details. If you think about how, oh, like the the type of manipulation and the words that Lucifer had to use in order to be able to con, this was the biggest con he'd ever pulled. There was, I mean, granted the subject was a was a blank slate. But this was the building block. This was the foundation of all his lies. And if he could get her to do what he wanted, now he had a weakness. And, and as I was sitting there contemplating these things and, and thinking about, you know, the, the, the amount of struggle that Eve must have gone through to resist in the beginning what Lucifer was trying to get her to do, but to finally allow herself to believe in those lies and to take a bite of that apple. I mean, because the scripture says that Lucifer told her that it was a good fruit to eat and that God was lying to her about not wanting them to eat it because they would die. But then think about it. If God created us in his image and he was afraid that now with our knowledge that we would go and eat of the fruit of life and we would have life eternal. So he then went and protected that tree. I don't think and, and this is where this was God. <laughs> because we never questioned it. We took it at face value. But God made me realize that he never intended for us not to partake of the tree of knowledge. He never intended for us not to partake of the tree of life. He intended it to be for a specific time, which makes perfect sense. He wanted to first educate us on how to cultivate the land, how to be faithful and obedient. And then after a prolonged period of time of proving ourselves to him and being exactly what he wanted us to be, then we'd be ready to eat of the of the tree of knowledge but it would be his hand leading us with that information and teaching us how to use that knowledge to protect us from wow and i was, and, and and as i was coming this way he's like you've got to share this knowledge you've got to share this information because Everyone thinks that they were never allowed or they were never going to be allowed to partake of the tree of knowledge. And that's not true. It was always going to be a part of my education to you. But the way that Lucifer inserted himself as an obstacle, I mean, and we know God already knew that this was going to happen. He already knew that Lucifer was going to part, put, that he was going to fall, that he was going to walk away from him because he knows he's already been to the future. He's already been to the past. He's, he knows everything. So he already knew. But maybe that was the point. Maybe that was why he made the rule. 
not to eat from the fruit because God needed to test his creation. He needed to test the quality of the obedience that would be created from his creation. You know, and it, it then it brought me to the scripture where it says that the woman f- uh, flew was was carried off by a- by eagle's wings into the into the mountains um, to, re- to to get away from the from the dragon. But again, we think of that as you know, oh, this must have been Mary because that was Jesus. No, this was Eve. And there is going to be, just like there is a second Adam, there is going to be a second Eve. And you, if you haven't really thought about it, you really need to start listening to Tara. I can't beat that drum enough. God has really, like, he has been cementing the piper. And the piper plays a flute. And only the children can hear the flute. And if you are going to want to continue walking with God, you are going to have to understand the new way of speaking. You know, as I was coming here, again, I've been on a fast since last night, but God doesn't have me do long fasts. He has me do Um, And he's never had me do a dry fast since the first one I did, especially right now because of the way that I'm, I'm very, I'm barely eating as it is. Um, But last night, uh, my boss hands me a box of food, a, a pizza box. And I was like, you made this for me? And he goes, sure. (laughs) It was a pizza that they had made incorrectly, but. God led him to give it to me. Now, normally, they'll eat the pizza themselves. They'll, they'll be like, they'll take a slice and they'll eat. And then if you happen to see it, they'll share it with you. But this one, he specifically handed it to me. And I just, in my mind, I was like, okay, God, I got you. Thank you. Thank you for the food. But it was to prepare me for the fast that I'm about to do. This fast is going to be nine days or five days. Nine to nine, to nine, to nine, to nine. <laughs> God has a strange way of telling me that I need to fast at certain times. And um, it, it was, um, so then as I'm, you know, cause I've been told you can go home now. And so I was given this pizza and the last person I helped before I clocked out of for the day was a police officer. But not just a regular police officer. It was um, a tribal land police officer. Um, there are, just like there are police officers in the city, there are tribal police officers. And they have certain jurisdictions. And then, as I was leaving, there's these two people, these older people that I talk to all the time. They're regular customers of ours. And I was standing there talking to them. And all of a sudden, one state trooper two straight troopers, three straight troopers, and all of a sudden another little small group of state troopers. And in my mind, I'm like, Father, why are there so many police officers here today? He gave me my answer today. And he goes, what have I been telling you lately? Having to do with law enforcement? You're you're, you're changing my guard. And he goes, 
The police officers in the city can only go in the city. I'm like, true. In order for them to make an arrest and like, or pull someone over, like say on the freeway, they have to call a state trooper or a highway patrol to come and help so that then it's a legal pull, uh, uh, traffic stop because they don't have jurisdiction in those areas. And he goes, okay. So, because then he had, as I was leaving, I thought they were just regular police officers. I didn't look at their uniform. I looked at their uniform, but I didn't really, like, pay attention. And then as I was leaving, God's like, look at the cars. What are they? State troopers. What can state troopers do? Well, they're police officers for the state. They can go anywhere. That's right. And he goes, you needed protection detail that could go anywhere. Oh. <laughs> I was like, so it started last night with all these police officers and I was starting to think like, what am I, what, am I doing something wrong? Then this morning as I was driving over to where I'm at, there was another police officer behind me. I know I keep talking about these police officers, but I've, I've gotten pulled over and not gotten a ticket, but you know, just like God has people that are for him, Lucifer has people that are for him. And all it takes is one bad police officer that is willing to do the bidding of Lucifer to say, well, I'm taking you in. And it could detain me for a few days and delay me or, you know, because of that, now I'm losing my job. I'm now my, my things are all messed up. So these are all, you know, corruption is a thing. It, there's bad people everywhere because unfortunately people allow themselves to be used by Lucifer. And I don't mean bad people as in they're, bad, bad. I mean, like they do bad things or they make commit sin. Um, but I don't hate them because I understand what's happening. So yesterday, no. so as I'm driving here, I was thinking about, you know, all these things. And then God brought the woman in Revelation because it's a passage that's been in me for a long time. And he said, this is the second Eve. Who is Eve? And Tara, you actually helped me out with this because I, it, and I didn't even realize it had stuck with me, but you had said the mother's tears or the mother's crying. It, it was a video you just did. I didn't get to listen to it because God had me watching other videos. And then he's like, okay, take a break from YouTube. You, you just need to stop listening and watching all this stuff. And I'm like, okay. And so I did. And, but that, that crying woman crying caught my attention. And I, it's, even though I haven't been thinking about it in the forefront, it was in the back end. And then he goes, so if Lucifer comes against the second Eve and she was able to get away, who are her children? He's, he is first trying to come after Eve, the second Eve. And if he's not able to destroy her, he is then going to turn his focus on her offspring. And in this instance, the world is who Lucifer is going to come and attack. But more specifically, God's chosen children. And it's all representative because the first Eve, 
was succumb to the lies. The second Eve has to be able to see the past and relate it to the present and keep herself in God's grace. Keep herself in line with God because he's already forgiven her. And once she has been removed from Lucifer's um, reach, he is then going to turn his focus on those that remain. There is a reason God is doing this so quickly. Next year is going to be a turbulent year for those that are not with God. There is going to be a lot of outcry. There is going to be a lot of blood. And these children are going to lash out. They're going to be angry. But instead of turning to God and asking God to intervene, they are going to turn themselves against God's children. and try and take the grace that way. God already knows. He already, all of the ones who are going to return to God have been accounted for. He showed me today that the 144 has been complete. They have all been accounted for. That's what the angels have been doing in this entire year is accounting for all of God's children wherever they are. And they all now have the stamp of God on their forehead. So as God's children are beginning to live the life that was denied them in the beginning now will begin to receive the life that they have suffered for. Because God knows that he can trust these children to not walk away from him, to not fall to the lies and the manipulations of Lucifer. But it's not just Lucifer. Lucifer is one of many There are other lower dominion gods that people pray to that have no power. Because you see what these idols have done is attach themselves to God's grace. And they show people how to tap into that grace. That is why God says that his children die or lose their lives for lack of knowledge because they don't understand that the one true God is the only one who gives the blessings. Everyone else just jumps on his curtails because they know how he operates. You know, Lucifer was there when God created the earth. He was there when God created man. So he knows God's power. He knows the way God's works. 
What he didn't see were the things that he missed once he was thrown out of heaven. Which is why he could only do certain things. But God also only gave him certain powers. Certain abilities. And the stronger that we become, the easier it will be for us to walk away from Lucifer, walk away from his lies, walk away from his manipulation. And so that's where I was feeling this morning. And God was, was unctioning me that I needed to share what it feels like when you're, when you're about to get a breakthrough and the way that the manipulation manifests itself in not just the things around me, but in the thoughts that I'm having, in the feelings that I'm having. It, and it's not that my flesh is taking control because I, God has subdued my flesh. My flesh is done. It, 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 it's in line. Okay? But Lucifer still will bring things in my environment that will cause me to feel a certain way. That will provoke certain thoughts to come in to my mind. And when I start to feel those things and I start to see those things, I start to hear myself talk like this, that's when I start to pray. Father, please take these words out of my head. Please take these thoughts out of my mind. If it is your will that this situation flourishes, then let it be so. Because I am in agreement with whatever you are trying to con have come into my life. But if this is not of you, I pray, Father, that you remove it from my life and that you send it away so that I will have peace and tranquility once again. And he has been showing me that this is the way that we must be every time. As I'm getting closer and closer, this is the, the hardest one I've had so far to face. So I know that this breakthrough that's coming is this is it that this is the one I'm going to step through the gate and everything around me is going to change it's not going to look the same it's not going to be the same and a lot and and Lucifer is using those feelings that knowing to try and get me to back off. So he's like, are you right? Are you sure? Well, why is that police officer over there? Why are you heading into a traffic jam? Why are you, why haven't you seen cheaper prices? Why haven't you seen this? Why, have, why can't you find a place to stay? These are the doubts that Lucifer causes you to have. And then what happens is in you thinking that, oh, maybe I need to do this in order to get this done. Oh, maybe I need to fast when you really don't. Oh, maybe I need to, I need to go left instead of right, even though God's telling you to go right. You're, you're, because then you second guess yourself. Then you're like, well... I thought about going right, but now I'm feeling like I should be going left. I'm going to go left. Have you ever, do you ever remember having those situations where you thought, oh, if I, the answer is D, but you pick A because that was the, 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 the change that happened in your mind. You're like, nope, it's A, it's, it's. 
But then you're like, man, if I had just stuck with my first answer, I would have had it right. Or you pick a prize, a prize door, a prize, some, a hidden prize. And your instinct was to go with door three or prize three. But you went with the first one and you either got nothing or you got something that wasn't as good as the one you had originally thought about picking. This is that moment that I'm having. I'm having this, well, maybe I shouldn't, maybe, maybe. And that's when I have to steal myself. I have to push myself to be in peace and allow God to come through and because when it's God, it feels good. It feels easy. There's no doubt. But if I'm not still, if I'm not at peace, if I don't go into my secret place, and you have to start to learn to do it on an instant, whether you're driving, whether you're talking to someone, you have to know how to be able to uh, tap into that secret place and say, Father, if this is you, let it come through and allow the peace to take over you. When you're new in your walk, it's hard because you don't understand how it feels to have that peace. But once you get that peace and you, you're like, I want it again. And that's how God allow, helps us to Create, to, to build those muscles, to build that knowledge, to build that trajectory, to be able to do that, to be able to call on him on an instant and say, I need your peace. I need, I need you. And he'll show up every time. He'll show up every time. And it's amazing to see when you... Allow him to be him, to be your father, your creator. And this, the, the, the symbiotic rhythm that is created, it, it's like being born again. It's like being alive for the first time and I'm just grateful and I'm thankful that God saw it fit 